Hi guys, welcome back to Free Circuit Lab. Hope you know this watch from your childhood because it was our first watch in life. The machinery inside this is amazing. It has an LCD display, a battery, a crystal and a small board with an onboard chip. So let's do a post-mortem of it and find some knowledge from it. Here we find a crystal which works as its heart beating 32768 or 2 to the power 15 times a second. That frequency is later divided 15 times by 2 to get our desired 1 Hz signal for the time counter. We will talk about it later in another video. Now let's focus on its LCD. In this video we will find its pinouts and will see the driving signals in real time with a scope. The LCD is driven by 13 pins on the board. I did many research online but never found a clue how it works. So I had collected some information by myself. Here we have a rubber strip on the LCD. It is called zebra strip. It has alternatingly conductive and non-conductive strips which helps to connect the LCD with the PCB prints. The digits in this LCD is 3 and half digits type, 3 full digits with 7 times 3 that means 21 segments and a half digit at the left having 2 segments and finally a colon in the middle. So we have 24 segments in total. But we have only 13 pins to drive them. What is the trick here? Well, to find it out, I have jumped its both switches to VCC. Now it shows all the segments at once. That means 1888. So we will block the drive pins one by one and then by observing the missing segments, we can easily find out which pin is for which segment. Now I have blocked the rightmost pin and I have named it pin 1 and we see many missing segments. Now I block the pin 13 that is the leftmost pin. I have numbered them from right to left for no good reason. Now it also blocks many segments but this time it is the complementary ones of the previous one. So we can assume that it has two common pins having nearly half of the segments to drive and blocking any other pin blocks only two segments which are part of common A and common B. Now let's remember again. Pin 1 and pin 13 blocks half of the segments complementarily to each other and any other pin blocks only two segments one of them are from COM1 group and another from COM2 group. I found something unusual here. Blocking pin 13 results the appearance of lower parts of each number except this one and blocking pin 1 results appearance of this which does not correlate with its neighbors. Again by blocking pin 6, it blocks 3 segments but any other pin blocks only 2 segments. So I think this lower segment is merged to the upper segment. It will not cause any problem to show any digit except 7. But in this number, it never displays 7 because after 59, it gets 0. So we don't need to display 7 here. So we saved one drive pin. Again we can save one more pin in the one at the left side because it only shows one or blank. So there is no need to drive the two part of these uh, separately. So they have fused them together. So we have 22 segments to drive. There are two common connections. So we need only 11 pins to drive because the two common connections will help to multiplex the 11 drive pins to the 22 segments. So the 11 drive pins and the two com pins explain the 13 pins on the PCB. Amazing. But what more interesting is the waveform of the drive signals. There is no DC bias, it is actually a AC bias. It goes to positive, zero and negative as well. The phase relation between the two COM signals set in such a way that when one signal goes high in the positive or negative side, another signal collapses to ground. The frequency of the COM signals is 32 Hz, which again explains the binary nature of the system. Also, the alarm sound in such a clock has frequency of 4096 Hz, again in binary, that means the power of 2. So we can assume that it gets different frequencies by dividing the clock signal by 2 many times. I am using a Raspberry Pi Pico as oscilloscope with Scope Pi Android app and connects to a phone over USB to show the data. I made two jumpers to pick up the signals from it. Here is one COM signal and the drive signal of the colon at the middle which blinks at every second and we also find that the drive signal changes phase at every second. When the opposite phase comes with respect to the COM signal, the 
colon appears and when the same page of the com signal appears at the drive pin the colon disappears because then it does not have potential difference at its cathode and anode when the two signals are the same page the two com signals alters very fast so we see numbers are steadily on but they are actually blinking 32 times a second the com signals are actually ac because they have positive and negative voltages also any kind of lcd displays are driven from ac or alternating polarity signals to prevent permanent polarization in the liquid crystals no matter which lcd you are using it may be a phone a tv or a laptop lcd or in fact a calculator watch or anything else any lcd is driven from alternating signals now the question is is it possible to make a big clock out of this because i did similar experiment with led watch it works well but it cannot work with lcd watch because the drive signals for the lcd is very weak they affects badly if i touch the pins so we need to amplify the signals by mosfet or buffers then we can drive big clocks or big segments but that is not so beneficial because we can make a microcontroller rtc clock in very cheap price so guys i hope you like this idea you must got some amazing knowledge from it if so don't forget to like the video and watch my channel and subscribe thank you for watching i will catch you in my next video